All right, we're back, and I don't know what I'm doing. So let's figure it out. So Door Gunner Mega Mix. Oh, right. I know exactly what we're doing. Oh, damn it. This is the song that's always copyrighted. Which, not as useful for those of you watching on YouTube, because I have to cut the song out. It's the song with the... I don't know. It's nothing horn it's nothing but horns and it gets copyrighted every time i think i might reach out to the devs and be like can i get whitelisted because this is really annoying because it's all their music it just gets flagged every time anyway let's see buy the boombox let's buy the let's buy the boombox and here you are, quality sound reproduction on the go. It'll play anything, wherever. Turn any tape into a, co a conversation of sound and shapes. <sighs> Should have I tried to get a discount? How much of a waste of space am I? That's that's the problem I, re I struggle with on this game. It's like, I am too nice of a person, I think, and it's bad, but I don't know. Okay, so... Do I want to spend a skill point just to get some kind of superstar? I don't know. Hey, you know what? Let's look at let's look at some things for a second. So if we go to the map, what tasks do I have? So electrochemistry, bird's nest, Roy, and I even I I totally forgot that. Novelty dice maker has shivers. Suggestion with the cryptozoologist, zoologist, light wife. Hmm. Points in empathy might not be a terrible idea. Especially because my empathy is actually pretty low. Yeah, let's let's get that. Because Kuno seems like he's a tough nut to crack. But it seems like if I do crack it, we might get some we might get something interesting. Or not, I don't know. Or Ya Oranye. Revachol and Klazie. Okay, so Oranye. It's not RNG. It's a Ranye. There we go. God damn song. The problem is the music in this game is super freaking good. Occasionally. The problem is half of it is copyrighted, so it's really difficult for me. I want to just turn it off, but I feel like... Yeah. You know what? I don't know. I think I'll just bug the devs and see if I can get uh, whitelisted by them or something. Okay. So, actually, we just go into the inventory now. I was just trying to get away from it. I guess let's go into the whirling and rags. Because the problem is, if there's any voice acting while this specific song goes, I usually have to cut it out. Not always. Like, the weird part is, it's it's totally random whether or not I need to actually remove the song or not. I think in that case, I, I would. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway. Giant boombox next to face. Okay. Equip this to play tapes. The reel-to-reel -reel boombox of everyone's youth. A little banged up, a little chipped, and honestly not that loud either. Looks cool though. Excels at being carried on the shoulder. Allowing you to play audio tapes. Audio tape items and blast music into the face of unsuspecting strangers. Oh, so this is the uh the picture of what's his face outside the guard a black and white photo of a couple posing in front of a ferris wheel the girl's young and pretty the man clad in fancy uniform and smiling on the back a very steady hand has written the words revishal bears summer of 91. okay door gunner mega mix magnetic tape acquired from titus hardy it supposedly holds a recording of a, of the Mercenary Task Force radio communications recorded via de-encryption de station. Not a good omen. Requires a boombox to play. The portal reel is just what you needed. The reel's attached to the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is routed behind the magnetic reader. Play the tape. Cripes, that was loud. You push the commencer, or you push commencer, and the tape starts spinning. Violent static and machine sounds fill the air. 
This ain't Revachol, a man's voice says. This is an effing village. I can almost see the elephants. Another loud screech. Some kind of machinery. The harbor. Kim takes out his notebook. That's the sound of a convulsant crane. Oh, it is. We heard that earlier. More static. When this shit is done, I'm going to tear that place up. Soldier of the Apocalypse style. Kill shit, dogs, and chickens too. Going to rent a room, Cordy. Real nice one. This part's unintelligible. I don't give a shit. I'm effing done. I'm done mentally. I'll effing do them all in. Jeez. Yeah, sure. Uh, rape that disco cunt on the counter. You know, the dancer whore upstairs. Do it Lee Schmin style. Wow. I, I don't like this guy. Never to get that taste out of my mouth. A click, then silence. The rest of the tape is empty. The lieutenant presses the button marked Eritere on your porter reel. The tape stops spitting. Was that at the very end? Silence? End of recording. What do you think? It seemed authentic enough. Probably they recorded off their shortwave, then edited to seem more incriminating. He sounded like he was on patrol around the harbor walls. I agree. He also sounded inebriated. Still, the lieutenant looks at the tape. You're familiar with the look now. It's a look of suspicion. Let's try that again. But he did say he was going to do it. You can't edit words into someone's mouth. Indeed, but the lieutenant looks at the tape. Okay, same thing. Who's this Cordy? One of the other mercenaries, I think. The one he was talking to. Friend of his? It's Lee Schmin. A village of the Samaran Isola in... TNN. Grodd uh, committed war crimes there. The kind of thing he talks about. The TNN conflict is an ongoing proxy war between Grodd and Safre. It's been, a uh, been hot for 12 years with the atrocities piling on. Mostly committed by the Grodd. You think he was there? Who knows? Maybe the tattoos would have an answer. Or maybe Lee Schmin is just merc talk for atrocities. Slaughter. A symbol of soldier of apocalypse style conduct in a civil environment. Okay, then. What now? I think we got a few more questions for Klausia, don't you think? He looks around. This seems to contradict her testimony. At least to some degree. As you take out the tape, the boombox tunes itself back to the cheery radio again, spewing out beats like it's, Friday, like it's a Friday night. The contrast feels chilly. Inappropriate, even. Okay, and let's uh, let's go back to tools. I'm going to unequip the boombox, so I'm not just carrying it around. Because I'm not a big fan of it. Okay. Do we have anything else? No. But I do have my bag out, so maybe I can clean up the bottles in Klossier's room. Let's see. Yep. Bottles. I wish they were still interactable, even if you didn't have the bag. It would just be like, please get bag. Dang it, Kim. Out of the way. I'm doing my civic duty of cleaning up after random people. Because bottles are the only way I pay rent. It's a bit of a problem. So, I did see as part of this game, I was looking at the Reddit a little bit. It does look like you can change your portrait somehow, because I saw somebody else where they didn't have the munch mutton chops, which was interesting and not expected. We still also really need to get the body down, which is a problem. Anyway, so... Officer, it's a fine day for questions. Titus Hardy gave us a recording where the deceased states his intention to commit rape. She puts her coffee cup down. With a soft ring, the porcelain meets the metal table. Did he? A smile flits across her face. I never said he was a good man, or that he had good intentions, only that he was never bad to me. She doesn't care. If anything, she sounds amused. On this tape, he specifically identifies you as the target. Hmm. Where did they get this recording exactly? Intercepted radio chatter of the deceased, recorded via a de-encryption station. It's authentic enough. She arches her brow. Does he say it's go he's going to do it Soldier of the Apocalypse style? Those are the exact words he used? Yeah, that was practically his pickup line. He picks the cup back up. A memory surfaces in her tied, tired ne neocortex. It's not entirely unpleasant. 
Did he say whores a lot? Was he pretty much on the verge of doing it Lee Min style? Uh, Lee Schmin style. Lee Schmin was mentioned. He wasn't actually there. He didn't do a tour. Or at least didn't tell me he did. Would have been overkill anyway. He lived his own little Lee Schmin. It was in his everything. Why say things like that, Machismo? Yes, was he bragging? Oh no, I'm pretty sure he did all those things. Then he integrated them into his idea of normalcy to keep on living. So they just sort of turned into his, she thinks, what's the word I'm looking for? Persona? Running joke, I was going to say running joke, and it sounds like you didn't even get the good bits. Le Lely's punchlines got way, way funkier than that. He was like this... He was like the Seminese Conflict, the Leishman Massacre, and the 36 Famine in Yesut all rolled into one person, then cast in Ornyes? Orin Ornyes? Oh, shoot. I... They gave me the pronunciation thing, and I've already lost it. Ornyes Ceramic Armor. Then he wore... Which he wore in bed and in the shower. You spend time with this person romantically? We're all scraping up any happiness we can find, officer. Going around with our little scouring sticks. You, your first love, Mr. Leishman here. Did he tell you he had actually done any of those things here in Martinez, I mean? No, we were too busy laying waste to our own nervous systems to direct any of the fury outward. He seemed, she thinks, he seemed happy, I guess, at ease. As much as a man like him could be. What kind of a man was he? Before you go, ask for details. She seems okay to talk about it. Thank you for clearing that up, miss. He turns to you. Whenever you're ready, I'm interested to hear what Titus Hardy has to say now. Now that you've had some time, can you tell us more about the victim? Like, for example, his name. Actually, officer, I don't know his name. I just called him Lely. A nickname? I guess. He came from Lelystad. It's short for that. And it was his army name, apparently. He said his real name wasn't his. I tried to pry it out of him, but it was no use. Well, at least thought that's a good start. The lieutenant writes it down in his notebook. Then starts tearing out a page, but stops mid-motion. It just occurred to me, colleague, he says, turning to you. We still haven't performed a field, a field autopsy of the deceased. Question I have assumes some kind of foreknowledge on our part. I suggest we go and perform it now and return once we've... Brought ourselves up to date. I have other questions first. All right, but quickly. She has endured that sight long enough. He nods towards the yard. It's time for us to do our duty. Okay, so we can't we can't do anything else until we cut down the body, which I still can't figure out how to do. Excuse the delay, miss. Says with a nod towards the yard. The situation will be addressed now. We'll be back soon. The young woman nods then proceeds to feed herself another cigarette as you leave. Oh, the problem is I don't have a ladder. Nor do I know how, where to get one. Because last time I jumped for it, I actually quite literally died. So, hmm. I can't shoot the corpse down. I don't have any... I don't have a gun. I mean, I do have a gun, but it's useless. Probably worth selling. But I don't know if I can sell it to somebody better or just to the pawn, pawn shop guy. I, uh, I feel like this is one of those games that I'm going to hoard everything because it might be useful later. And then it turns out not to be, which is an issue. Can I help you? Oh. Huh. There's still no ladder here. I... You know, I, I honestly don't know. I'm just going to keep wander, wandering around and trying to find stuff. Because we've certainly hit a bit of a wall here. And that's an issue for me. Because there's a ladder in the shed, but I can't use it. I guess we'll just interact with it. We need to talk about getting him down again. Yes, we do.
Hmm. Maybe we could shoot him down? Yeah, the enthusiasm is unrestrained. Bang, bang, time pigs. Shoot his head off. The lieutenant remains unaffected. How? Where the buckle ties... Uh, where the buckle ties the rope to the branch. That's a good spot to aim. Point to it. There. The buckle holds the belt together. Where? He corrects his glasses. Ah, oh, yes, I see. If the shot hits that there, uh, hits that, there might be a chance to release the belt. And yeah, now we're talking. Entertain Kuno with some shit. He'll miss. The pigs will miss Kuno. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Let me try. Men's brow is furrowed. He appears too deep in concentration to even notice what you said. Say nothing. Let him choose. Silence. With his elbows sharp, the lieutenant unzips his jacket and produces a lightweight firearm. He drops a paper cartridge in the barrel, separates the scouring s stick, and gives the cartridge five tucks, securing it in place. That's a... Kaijal A990, armistice mass-produced muzzle loader, aesthetic frugal, one of the most common firearms in the world. He then steps back, assumes a phallostess position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches, his finger on the trigger. Easy does it. He's going to effing miss. The kid's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. A cloud of smoke slowly parts the air as Lute Lieutenant steps back and says to himself, God damn it. He feels bad about it. About his eyes mostly, just having bad eyesight. Probably from a young age. Whatever you do, do not console him. <laughs> well, I'm not. See, Kuno, Kuno could have hit it easy, but then Kuno's not an effing, is not having handicapped, is he? Try game, maybe? No. We're lucky as it is. We didn't break anything. The victim remains uncompromised. He looks around at the windows overlooking the yard. Any more mistakes could put us in an unfortunate position with the locals. We have eyes on us. I didn't do any favors with that. Well, now. I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down without assistance. Can I have the gun? I should try. It's... Bad as it is, us shooting firearms like punks. He pauses, then shrugs, and proceeds to load the pistolet. Go ahead, I'm not stopping you. Just don't lose it. The piece shines in his outstretched hand. They only have one gun. This is the sorriest pair of pigs Kuno's ever seen. Take the gun. Yeah, take it, you effing Benanipoika. Take it and shoot yourself in the mouth. Feel the weight first. The cold piece of Bakelite and gunmetal is surprisingly <laughs> light. Your finger fits right through the guard, instinctively resting on the trigger. The F are you waiting for, Kuno? Tell him to shoot himself in the mouth. Point the gun at the belt. The belt comes into focus in your sights. You stand with your feet planted firmly on the ground, your hand behind uh, your left hand supporting your gun arm. Okay, so that's a pretty low check. Close your left eye first. The field of view narrows. The branch slowly moves, becoming entirely two-dimensional. The metal buckle glimmers, slick with falling rain. The corpse slowly rotates. The slow movement of the bra branch in wind in your and uh, branch in the wind and your shoulders directing the gun sink up, dancing hypnotically. Let's see. Look, he's crying. You gonna cry now? Effie? Wow. Alright. Say so shut up. Okay, that's still a low, low chance. It's hand-eye coordination. Unfortunately, I can't change anything else. I can try shooting again. 42% chance? Let's try it. Got it! The buckle explodes into tiny pieces, coming loose with a whir. With your hand numb from the recoil, you look at the body slumped down. For a moment, the man appears to kneel in front of you, looking straight at you, helpless, trapped within himself. Who killed you? Communism. 
It takes a millisecond for the association of flash within your cortex. You have no idea where it's coming from, only that it's right. Then the rigor in his muscles gives up, and he smashes sideways into the spring mud, letting out a horrid stench. You've been policed. Ace is high, the lieutenant raises his right hand, waiting for you to slap it. Ace is high, a custom invented by the aerostatic brigades during the revolution, is used to celebrate success in Revachol. Especially in sports, the gesture is spread across the world, despite the defeat of the revolutionaries themselves. Slap it. Hell yeah. Thought gained, Ace is high. Lieutenant takes a little hop to perform the customary salutation. Your palm hurts from the slap. It's precise and down to the point. I knew these guys were... Alright. Uh, his voice is deeply approving. What now? <laughs> or do we just confirm it? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, we're slur. Got a problem with it? Kuno cracks with laughter. Sounds like someone's strangling a seagull. It's clear he enjoys himself. I knew they suck each other off. What now? Reform a field autopsy and determine the cause of death. Before, excuse me, he needs to turn away from the corpse. Looks like I feel like taking a break from the stench. I'm sorry to interrupt the jubilations here. Just a little breather before we do the autopsy. Alright, give him back his gun. He holsters it. I would suggest we interview Everett and Joyce, the leader of the Union and the Wild Pines rep. But we've already done that, so it's up to you, detective. Take us where we need to be. He trusts you have plenty of things in the task chain, lined up. Alright. We got a body down. This is good. I'm going to save celebratorily. Aces. Uh, middling. Okay. So now that we've got the body down, I guess let's deal with it. The running man lies on his side with his eyes looking straight through you. The belt is still around his neck. His body is supine and open to intrusion by autopsy. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Tell me something, dead man. Shoot, Looney Rooney. Which was it that killed you? Love or communism? Huh? You said love killed you, but when you fell down, you said it was communism. You're misquoting me, Rooney. I said communism killed me. Love did me in. You really need to learn the difference, buddy. This is embarrassing. I hate you, you're, you stink, and you're boring. Let me remind you of someone. A child born with Moeller's disease, Harlequinism, grown up miraculously. A deep sea creature. No, not quite. Be fair now. They be affected by Harlequinism. You sure wriggled out of that one, Cap Capolini. Enough. Come back later, Capo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also see me in your dreams. First, what exactly is a field autopsy? Come on, officer. He pulls on a pair of latex gloves. You know what a field autopsy is. You've done a hundred of them. What you do know is, at 18.9 kilometers, the dormant shield volcano Corpus Mundi is the largest... is the world's highest summit. And the failure of a, uh, the 38 single Et Hui Du Song to crack the top 20 was the death knell of Disco. But what a field, aut field autopsy is? You have no idea. Do you have another pair of gloves? Unfortunately, no. I have gardening gloves. Maybe they'll be enough. Better than nothing. The lieutenant looks at the gloves. I'll tell you what, I'll perform the anatomical side of things. Will you take notes? We'll just, we just fill this in, right? Show him the red field autopsy form in your ledger? That's right, he nods. Open your ledger at the field autopsy form. The dead man stares in silence as you crack open the ledger. The bright red paper is covered in boxes and lists, describing the condition of his skin and organs in three parts. Above those, an 11 field info form needs filling out first. It begins with... Uh, uh, one assistant. That's you, Harry Dubois. The corpse is indifferent to your scribblings. It just lies there. The next box says, coroner's case number. Uh, that's a lot. I'm just gonna not read that. KK, oh! Okay, KK57-08038. 
0.0815. This is actually important. So KK, Kim Kitsuragi, 57, precinct 57, followed by his date, by his date, 0803, and time of arrival, 815 on the scene. He's indexed the case after himself, not you. That's because he doesn't want to bring up the messy question of your initials. HDB? HDB? Yeah, whatever. Next, name. We've heard a nom de guerre, Lely. It's better than nothing. Write it down. Lely! What's next? Date of birth? Date of birth. Not available. Age? Huh. The man collects it, corrects his glasses. Roughly 50. Try 40. The damage is so extensive, it's better to err on the young side. I'm going to write 42. He nods. Race? Mondial. Fair to olive skin from the Isola of, Mundi Isola of Mundi. This is as vague as it gets. You might as well say white-ish. Write it down. The pudgy mess of curdled meat looks neither Mondial nor anything other. Sex? <laughs> oh boy. Male. Pig's gonna have sex? <laughs> the fact that I can write all of these is wild, but male. Nor does he look male, with his pregnant belly and indistinguishable face. Date of death. We're still going with March 4th, 51, right? 40351. What else? He looks over your shoulder. Body identified by is non applicable. 10 case numbers, the same as the coroner's case. Okay. AK blah 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 listens, motionless, with the cargo belt still around his neck. Only one box remains. Evidence of treatment. None. At least not after initial examination. Let's see. I agree. Lividity pointed towards a lynching. Then again, the right lividity is easy to produce. If you know what you're doing, he places his hand on a dead man's chest as if pre in preparation. Your central nervous system recognizes this gesture. It's the stations of the breath. Ecclesiastic, religious in nature. A holdout from pre-Delorean burial rites. It takes him two seconds to perform, then... Somewhere in Jamrock North, a small woodshed behind Rosencrantz Row, Lieutenant Nick Fuerbach puts his hand to the chest of a small corpse, no larger than a monkey. It's raining outside. Light drizzle. There is darkness in the shed. Elsewhere yet, an obese female sits in a wicker chair, her silhouette ball-like against the window. Outside, Grand Quran. The day is turning dim for Sergeant Mac Torson. Hand extended, he approaches to make sure she is dead, more than anything else. And so all across Jamrock, Cold City, GRAH, 42 deceased persons found today, 42 stations of breath. We should start the post-mortem. Turn the page. The corpse cannot feel Kim's hand on his chest. It no longer meaningfully interacts with its surroundings. A thicket of boxes and lists on red copier paper tries to answer why. External examin uh, examination summary. Close, he begins. The deceased wears armored boots and white briefs. The make of the briefs is... Aberdeen, I think. Let's see. He turns his body onto the side, onto its side to check the underwear label. See, it's happening. Aberdeen, yes. Inexpensive, size M, color white. The disappointment is palpable. The red-haired thing was expecting something more lurid. Write it down. The rest of the clothes have been removed, post-mortem by scavengers. In order to get the victim's ceramic armor, officers are in search of the missing pieces. Removal of the boots is left for processing. Let's see, it would be clever of you to admit the boots altogether, sire, if you're to keep them for yourself, as you ought to. You deserve them more than anyone else. Omit the boots! The boot has a serial number. He twists the dead man's foot. It's E50-100-1000. The lines between the plates are in the shape of the alpha numerical. The number is purposefully concealed by the design. Write it down. Tattoos, he stands up, feet planted on either side of the body. The upper torso is covered in a single continuous tattoo, resembling a map of the night sky. It reaches from the right shoulder to the heart. The ink is blue and white. The assistant has a color photograph of the markings. To be added to the case files is document A1. The photo is taken on the scene using a Trigat Mini. Write it down. The deceased has a belt for airlifting cargo around his neck, tied with a hangman's knot. Color, yellow. Length, 3 meters. There's a buckle on the other end. Write it down. 
It produces a measuring tape. Well-nourished, athletically built, measuring 1.80 meters, generally consistent with age 42. Preservation is good. Ambient temperature below freezing. Write it down. Body hair is light brown. Distribution is consistent with age. He kneels to get a better look. The deceased had male pattern baldness. Hair is combed back, short. Touch the corpse's hair before moving on. His hair feels wet, soaked with rain, cold to the touch. Not that different from a living person after a swim. Stroke the hair. The stench is suffocating. Strands of dark brown hair start sticking to your hand like threads off of a ragdoll's head. There's brilliantine in there. His combed hair he combed his hair back with oil. Keep petting him. That's weird. More hair sticks to your hand. A hair off the rain soaked head of a dead man. There are bumps and dips in the skull. An alien landscape. There there, dead man. You were someone's child. It's over there. Or it's out all over now. Okay, write it all down, adding the brilliantine. The vividity is consistent with hanging. The head is congested congested. Contusions are present on the head, chest, and thighs. Consistent with stones thrown post-mortem. Low velocity. Effing low velocity! Jeez, ching chonk. The kid explodes. You think Kuno doesn't know what you're talking about? Velocity was effing max. Talking shit about Kuno's velocity. The lieutenant pays no heed. In addition, there are bite marks on the face. Scalp and chest. Consistent with predation. Write down, but amend for high velocity. <laughs> Screw Kuno. Ligature mark. The lieutenant produces a small folding knife, with the other hand pulling on the belt. He starts cutting into the polyester. The stench is horrid. After a while, it's obvious the material cannot be cut. The steel wiring, he concedes, breathless. There's too much of it. We need to remove the belt so we can get to the ligature mark. You got the right tool for that, the chain cutters. Let's see. Good thing we got these chain cutters. Pull out the rubber gripped cutters. Always good to think ahead. Now, he points to the rope squeezing the dead man's neck. We need to cut the belt to see the ligature mark below, carefully, with as much precision as you can. See, my pig's gonna F his head off. No, he ain't, see, looks blasé. Your pig's bore, uh, boring. Uh, alright. Sure. Uh, let's see. Look for a good spot to cut. The belt is equally tight around the whole circumference of the neck, swelling over the edges like white bread, rising from the yeast. The knot is the weak spot. The chain cutters fit there, steady now like a flower ranger. Two cuts and it should come loose. Okay, physical instrument, cut the belt off. After some deliberation, you sink the cutters into the knot, try tying the belt together. You squeeze the rubber hander... Bleh, wow, I, c I really can't read today. One second. Uh, let's see. So after some deliberation, you sink the cutters into the knot, tying the belt together. You squeeze the rubber handles together, sweat forming on your brow. Snap. The knot is slashed. Another cut and the belt falls apart like a flower bouquet, revealing the dead man's neck and the dark red ligature marks around it. The lieutenant kneels closer, running his finger along the dark red groove, until there's a gap the rope rises to a point, leaving a gap in the ligature mark. The suspension point is in the back of the neck. Hemorrhaging is observed on the skin above and below the ligature mark. The mark is well pronounced, consistent with a drop of 1 or 1 1.5 meters. Write it down. Chest is intact. He presses down on it. Normal contour. Abdomen is protuberant. Pelvis intact. Genitalia. He pulls down the man's underpants. <laughs> now it's gonna happen, see? I effing knew it! This is clearly what they've been waiting for. Ever since the autopsy began, the lieutenant is trying to make it as boring as possible. Genitalia is male and unremarkable. No evidence of injury. Inspect the genitals. The dead man's penis is average size, congested from the downward collection of blood. The testicles are uneven in length, hanging underneath. The genitalia is greenish. Marbling is present around the crotch. Eee. Write it down and move on. Back is symmetrical and intact. He struggles to turn the corpse on its side. Upper and lower extremities intact, but asymmetrical. There are combat injuries on the right hand, thigh, and hip. In addition, I see smaller residual scars, too numerous to count, covering 30% of his skin. 
from wounds sustained over two maybe over two maybe more decades dispersal and accumulation indicates long and active combat duty scarring is extensive way more than law officials uh-huh he nods we have a real muse museum here of battles wars write it down last item hands he takes the man's right hand and inspects it he moves to the other hand pick up the hand this flesh is cold, icy. Pleased to meet you. Where are you from? What's your name? My name is... I'm only effing with you. I know where you're from. From Cappadocia. And your name is Il Copo. What can I do you for, Il Copo de Copadicia? <laughs> it's good to hold your hand. Did you like it when I stroked your hair? I did, Kobo. I did. Reminded me of when I was a small boy. Before this happened to my face and body. You did me a kindness there. We should do this more often. Be close like this, I mean. Hands are clean, the lieutenant concludes. The dead man's fingers slip from your hand, cold and sausage-like. No sign of injury from struggling. Were we expecting any? I was. Maybe I'm not, seek uh, I'm not seeing them. Honestly, the stench is making it hard for me to think at the moment. Write it down. Oof. He turns to the side to breathe. It's not enough. He buries his face in the sleeve of his jacket. You hear a muffled voice. That's all for the external. Well done. What next? Uh, description of... Or no. Internal examination summary. Oh, I did that wrong. Okay. And continue before we've gone through external and internal investigation first. Thoroughly. Sorry. I pressed two because it says two ex internal examination. Anyway. Central nervous system, he says, and concludes abruptly, I have nothing. Do you have anything on this man's CNS? Of course, there's a moral to be drawn from it, a moral to the story. Nope. Musco skeletal. Purge fluid is coming from the mouth. He gets close to the swollen mouth hole, eyes squinting from the fumes. Not injury related. Eyes and tongue protuberant. Hyoid bone, let's see. With his eyes almost closed, the lieutenant puts his hand on the dead man's throat and begins to massage it gently. A rotting smell erupts in the mouth. Purge fluids run down the lips, back black and viscous. <laughs> yeah, jack that effer off. The hyoid bone is fractured, he says after a while. The rest of the uh, musculoskeletal system is intact, unremarkable. Write it down. Back hunched, as if in prayer, he begins to... Pry open the dead man's jaws. Respiratory system, he stops to exert more force. Both hands are used. Oops, sorry. Oral cavity shows no lesions. The victim has received dental implants, possibly after a combat wound. Mouth swollen, hemorrhaging present in mucose of lips and mouth. Look in the dead man's mouth. No scream, no sigh of relief rises from the darkness inside. It's humid there. Sickly sweet air, unlike anything living. You feel like you're about to throw up again. Straighten the mouth of his. Look deeper inside. Ow. It's hard. Once more, you taste the stomach acid in the back of your throat. A contradiction. Or a contraction. Your throat pumps a little something from your stomach and into your mouth. You're forced to swallow just to keep looking. Inside, you see darkness. Just a mess of meat and darkness. There. Our ancient mystery is down there, Kobo. Ask me later. Lieutenant, let's go of the jaws. The mouth snaps shut before you. Hemorrhaging present in the mucus. He repeats impatiently. Write it down. He wipes his brow. Hepatobiliary. Not available. Why? Don't we have anything? He looks at the corpse's stomach with a mixture of tiredness and disgust. Are you a hepatobility expert? Uh, let's see. Hepato means liver and biliary means gallbl gallbladder and bile ducts. Am I not... Am I an expert in those things? Nothing in your alcohol-soaked memory directs to having forensic expertise on either one. Don't think so. Neither am I. That's it. That's it. All right, not available. Same for toxicology and serology. Both NA. Both? Unless you have untapped reservoirs of knowledge there. Reservoirs? No. But they. But do they take obscure trivia and odd tidbits? The completionist in me wonders if there's something we could still do. Like a toxicology screening. He looks at the monster. At this stage, I doubt processing will find anything. Even if he was brimming with cocaine. But still, you should add a request. Mm, brimming with cocaine. 
Right, not available, and add toxicology requested. Cardiovascular. The body exhibits heavy lividity. Blood has gathered in the hands, feet, and neck. Hypostasis is visually consistent with the hanging. Write it down. Gastrointestinal. He breathes a sigh of approaching relief. His last field on the list. He looks around to the ground. The pool of feces there. This'll do. And he touches the corpse's bloated lower, lower abdomen briefly and says, Digested semi-solid food in some... In... In... Bleh. Digested semi-solid food in stomach. Voila. Keep the voila. What's next on the list? Description of injuries. Now that we've fully examined the body. Let's see. He tilts his head. We have bite marks, contusions on the head and chest, and a ligature mark encircling the neck. You'll need three fields. Leave a fourth one, too. Be thorough if you want maximum results. Bite marks! He nods. Head, chest, and scalp bite mark injuries. Predation by birds has caused damage to the body. Odontologist does not need to be consulted. Write it down. In your opinion, officer? Let's see. Beneath the description, there are two boxes waiting to be ticked. Non-fatal, post-mortem. Agreed. Next injury, contusions. So the skull bleeds from a post-mortem head injury, a stone. The injury does not have the rim of an early inflammatory response. A perpetrator on the scene has confessed to causing it post-mortem. At maximum velocity, Befo. Has confessed to causing it at maximum velocity. Write it down. Regulated blood sticks to his scalp and chest, where the countless stones have hit the dead man. Beneath the description of injury, two boxes, non-fatal, post-mortem. Right, next, ligature mark. Er, what's the fourth injury field for? Nothing, just in case. Okay, ligature mark. Finish the autopsy. A dark red, abraded ligature mark encircling the neck, with a gap in the nape measuring, let's say, 7 centimeters. The hyoid bone is fractured, the cervical column intact. I see hemorrhaging on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. Depth of the mark, one centimeter. No sign of clawing on the neck. Write it down. Below the note, two customary boxes wait to be ticked. The man's head jerks to the side, awaiting your judgment. The ring around his neck is visible. Think for a moment. There's time. Don't rush. I'm unsure on this one. I feel like it might be post-mortem. Yeah, be because he was clawing on it and his neck didn't break, chances are they hung him more as a sign than anything else. I'm going to go with non-fatal post-mortem. Huh. The lieutenant falls silent abruptly. He's deep in thought, eyes fixed on the bright red ring around the dead man's neck. Why did you say that? I'm serious, I don't think it was the injury... That this was the injury that killed him. Okay, why do you think it... Why don't you think it was fatal? Why weren't his hands tied? A big man like this, I'd tie his hands when marching him to the gallows. Honestly, I'm not sure... I'm not sure there weren't marks on the wrists. That part got blurry for me. This stench, he covers his mouth. But you're right. So ready to call this, now I think we should leave it empty. At least for the time being. He produce, produces a small black pa black plastic roll from his jacket. A body bag. Let's wrap this up. I pronounce the field autopsy over. First, out it go. It was a, he looks for the right words, an irregular field autopsy. We did not establish cause of death, which is supposed to be the goal of a field autopsy. But personally, I do not see this as a parameter for success. We also requested a toxicology screening. That was thorough. The results should arrive in a couple of weeks. If we're lucky, I would not hold my breath. What else? We were thorough with the list of injuries, too. We described them all in detail. What's there to say? Given the circumstances, it was a professional field autopsy. Oh, yeah. Well done, Master Detective. Maybe a drink's in order. Perhaps a drink is in order. Later, I mean. Now you see. That worries me. He wipes his forehead. You'll die if you drink. You know that, don't you? 
You're proving a useful detective. The organization would miss you. What now? I need a, cop a copy of that autopsy form, and I'll drive to the drive him to Fauberg. Rip out the out a copy of autopsy pages. We're processing. He looks at the dead man one more time, then at the slip of red paper in his hand, then at the corpse again. He's thinking, did I miss something? Stop wasting time, you're smart. Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Sure, we didn't get everything. There's always something. Okay, how many skill points am I sitting on? I'm sitting on one. Just shy of two. What is my perception, and can I make it better? My perception is mediocre. I can make it a little bit better. That's a bit better. Let's leave for the time being. So I need to get a little bit more... ...perception out of this. I don't think I have anything here that's really useful. Hmm. I don't see anything that boosts perception. Or hurts it either, so I guess that's kind of good. Five more EXP and I could potentially figure it out. Uh, I just don't know if we have... We have a couple of things. There's something I missed at the very least that I could do if I wanted to. Yeah, let's go, let's go get very distracted for a second and get a little bit of EXP and try and buff my perception more. Or we could just uh, save scum our way to success. I like the idea of that, honestly.